In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a pixel art maker. So before we proceed, I'm going to show you the demo of the project. So as you can see over here, there's a board present over here. And above that, there are three buttons. One is the reset. The other one is the color picker button. And the third one is an input button. So over here, what happens is if I press my mouse down and I move on the board, then as you can see on the screen, there is a drawing being made based on the color we have picked, which in this case is uh, yellowish. So I can color anywhere on the board whenever I press my mouse down and when I leave and I hover my mouse, it will stop coloring on the board. So I can basically select the color picker and I can select any color of my choice that I want. I'm going to select blue and I'm going to color. And as you can see, blue is also being painted on the screen. And now uh, this is this container that you see is a dynamic grid. And what I mean by that is whenever I change this value, this container will also change its grid size based on the value that we input over here. So basically, if I change this to somewhere around three, it's going to become a three by three grid and it's all going to happen dynamically. If I make it 20, it's going to become a 20 by 20 grid. If I make it 10, it's going to be a, be a 10 by 10 grid. And lastly, if I draw anything over here and I click on the reset button, then everything will be reset and you can restart your drawing all over again. So this is what we are going to build. So yeah, let's get on ahead with it. All right, so to start off, we have this basic HTML setup that you see over here. I have the index.html script JS and styles.css and I'm referencing both those files over here, script and styles.css. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and add the HTML. So basically we, uh, in the actual build, we have these three uh, buttons on top. This, these two are inputs and this is the button and a container. This is our current build. We are going to add the HTML for that. So I'm going to give it a div of class, nothing but options. And then underneath this div, I'm going to make a button, button, and this is going to be named reset. And then within this button, I'm going to give it a class name of button. And after this, I'm going to go down and I'm going to give an input. And the input is going to have a type of nothing but color. And just adding type equals to color will give us the color picker that we require since HTML provides this to us. And then I'm going to uh, initiate the default value of this color picker with that light, with that yellowish golden color that I showed in the demo. It's going to be this. Uh, this is the hex code for that. And then I'm going to give this a class of color. Oh, sorry, my bad. Class of color. All right. After this, I'm going to add another div. And this div is going to have a type of number. This is going to be the input where we input the grid size that we require. And then I'm going to initiate the value by 20. Uh, we can set any number we want. And then I'm going to give a class of size. Sorry, my bad. It's class of size. All right. And then after this, we need to add the container right underneath this. So I'm going to give div and I'm going to add the class name as container so now just by adding this in the html if i go to our current build you can see we get these three the button and two inputs and this is the color picker that html gives us directly by default and so let's go ahead and add the styling for all of this now i'm going to go to style.css in the style.css you can see this default styles added for the body to make everything centered and the margin padding set to zero now I'm going to go and add the individual styles for the elements. So I'm going to select options, going to give it a padding of 20px and then I'm going to give it a margin bottom of 20px again. And then I'm going to select display flex and I'm going to center everything, justify and center and align items center as well. And then after this, I'm going to add the styles for button and the input as well. Since they include some similar styles, we're going to add the similar styles for them, which is going to be 30px and then padding of 0 and 20x. Now after this, I'm going to add the styles for color. Color is going to have a padding of 0 and top and bottom of 20px and it's going to have a width of 100px and it's going to have a margin of 0 and top and bottom of 40px. Alright, and then we also have to add the styles for the container. The container is going to have a background color of black and then I am going to add a width of 1000px and a height of 1000px as well. And after that, I'm going to give it a display of grid. And then we are going to set the template columns and template rows. This is going to be nothing but a repeat of um, I'm going to first uh, just write a value four over here for each one fractional unit. So basically we are going to add four columns and four rows. And this is just for example, just to show you. But later on, we are going to add this value dynamically because as you can see in the original build, whenever we change this value, the number of grid also changes. So this needs to be added dynamically. So 
over here we have to make a variable on top of container and then pass it over here so that we can uh, get reference of, of that variable in vanilla js and update it here i'll show you how to do it but just for now i'm going to initiate a variable and i'm going to assign eight to it and we can call that size right over here var and size all right so this is going to be eight in the beginning but we are going to change this based on the value we input in that input field that we have so we have to do the same thing for the rows as well because it's going to be a grid so whatever value we input which is just 10 20 or whatever it's going to make it a 10 by 10 or a 20 by 20 grid and so on so over here we're going to do the same thing we're going to add that size variable over here for one fractional unit all right then after this we are going to add a grid gap of around 3px and we're going to give it a padding of 3px all right and now just to show you uh the styles that it works uh this should be rows by the way and now just to show you the style what i'm going to do first is i am going to add some boxes over here and that box is going to represent these individual grids that you see so finally we are going to add these individual boxes dynamically in in our script js file but just now for the ui purposes i'm going to i'm going to add it manually over here and i'm going to show you i'm just going to name this box sorry my bad i'm going to name it box and i'm gonna maybe just paste this around a few times let's say i'm going to paste this eight times actually let's make it 16 times um all right i'm going to save this and then if i go back to my styles let's just add these styles for those box and don't worry i'm going to remove those boxes that i added over here because i'm going to remove these boxes that i added over here because we want this to be added dynamically we don't manually just want to add 16 boxes right we want to add it based on the value that's given on the input so i'm going to go to the styles.css and then i'm just going to add um, i'm going to give it a color of a little dark grayish and then i'm going to give it a border radius of around 2x all right so now if we go and check in the browser we get this the grids are still coming properly that's because i haven't i forgot to add the semi semicolon if i save this and i go over here you can see these grids are coming but it's still not 8 by 8 right i had added 8 over here so it should be 8 by 8 but that's not happening because right now i'm adding these boxes manually and i have only added 16 of these if it's if we are adding 8 over here then we should have uh, we should add 64 of these divs to make it fill this entire container but obviously we're not going to do that because it's a it's going to be a pretty hectic process that's why i said i'll remove these and i'll add it manually in vanilla javascript using a loop so for now just to tell you about what i'm talking about this is what i mean i'll just add 4 over here so doing that what will happen is since i've added 16 uh, divs of the class box since i'm adding 4 over here it's gonna be a 4 by 4 uh, grid which is nothing but 4 into 4 is 16 so now it should fill up the entire container so as you can see here it's filling up the entire container that's what i'm talking about if i add this if i add this dynamically and i and i loop it for this size into size number of times then it will add the grids properly based on the container height so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove all of these boxes that you see here and just to give you a clear picture of what i mean i'm going to go to the script and i'm going to start writing the logic and i'm going to explain you what i was talking about so this this is all for the styles now in the script JS file uh, we can start by adding all the selectors uh, we will just store all the selectors in a variable so document.query selector i'm going to select container over here and i'm going to copy this because we have to do this for the other variables as well and over here this is going to be nothing but the size element and this will be nothing but size all right and this will be for the color color i'm changing both of them at the same time this is going to be reset button and over here we are going to be taking the button all right and i'm also going to declare a variable over here globally which is going to be size element dot value so the size element over here is attached to the size which is this so this has a value property right so i'm just i'm just putting that value in this uh size uh variable that i'm declaring globally because this needs to change dynamically and mean whenever the user inputs 
the number they want the grid size that they want so we are going to use this to manipulate it so after this all i'm going to do is right now if i go here you can see that this is just a black box because we removed all those dev boxes sorry we removed all those dev boxes now we are going to add all those grids dynamically using vanilla javascript code so i'm just going to write function and i'm going to name it add grid and with an add grid i first need to take the container and access its style property and within oh sorry my bad style dot set property and then i'm going to select the size variable that i had within the container and i'm going to attach it to the size so basically this container dot style dot size i'm going to take this variable and i'm going to make it equal to whatever the size this is so whatever the style size i input in the value is going to come over here all right so now i'm going to for loop and i'm going to start this by zero and i need to do this for size into size times and then i plus plus and then i need to create div and append all those boxes so create element of nothing but div and then i'm going to do dot class list dot add and i'm going to add the box and we have already added the style for the block box so after this all i need to do is i'm going to do div dot add event listener we need to add the mouse um, the mouse over and the mouse down events for each of those boxes so all i'm going to do is i'm going to select the mouse over and i'm going to attach a function to it on mouse over and i'm going to pass the dev onto it all right this should be capital all right and then i'm going to copy this thing all over again and i'm going to do same but for the mouse down event and this is going to be on mouse down all right and at last after all this we need to append all those each of those boxes to the container and child div all right now if i save this the default size we had set was four so i should get a four by four uh grid setup now if i save this and i go all right you still i'm still not able to see this the reason for that could be because i have forgotten to call the grid function we'll just call it right over here if i go to check there you go you can see all the boxes all the grid boxes being added down to this container and now we also haven't added any of those divs over here so this is a much better way and now uh, to move ahead let's just add these functionalities to add the color whenever we press the mouse down and we hover it around the container so for that all i'm going to do is i'm going to create these functions first function mouse over and i'm going to do the same for the mouse this should be on mouse down actually my bad same for mouse down and now let's just write these functions so this is taking the div as we know and this as well is taking the div so over here all we need to do first of all is um, we need to also define a variable here let draw equals to false because initially we are not drawing so let the draw state be false this is just going to detect the draw state based on which whether we should change the background of the box or not so initially draw is false so whenever draw is false while we are over, while we are moving our mouse over we should just return directly but when it's true what we are going to do is we are going to take the div dot style dot background color and we are going to change it to color dot value all right so this color is nothing but that input you were attaching it to and that input also has this value property so whenever we change the color from the color pro color picker this value will also update on its own and it will just append it to those individual div boxes that you have that's pretty easy right so now in the mouse down all i'm going to do is div dot style dot background color and i'm going to set the color dot value so now just by doing that if i go to my browser and if i click every, anywhere you can see the color change and if, and if i change the color to anything you can see that happen as well since i'm attaching it to the color dot value so now for the when i when i press it down and i move it it's not going to change that's because we haven't set the draw state to true so for that all i'm going to do is 
go down here and i'm going to add window dot add event listener and over here i'm going to say check for mouse down and when that happens i'm going to call a function and all i'm going to make it do is draw equals to true and i'm also going to take it for the mouse up mouse up because on mouse up i want the draw to become false again right so now if i go here and i click once it colors now if i press my mouse down and i move over colors everything on its way all right so this is what we wanted and if i change the color then you can see that work as well all right that's cool so now what we need to do is when when i click on reset this board should reset and when i basically change these values the grid uh the grid size should change which is not happening as you can see in our actual build when i change this the grid size changes right so this is what we need so let's go ahead and code the part for that i'm going to refresh this first of all what we need to add is the reset function so we are going to make a function named reset and over here i'm going to say container dot inner html equals to nothing but an empty string that's all and then i'm also going to call the add grid function all right so after it become after it resets it's also going to uh, set the grid to the size that's been defined all right and then after that i'm also going to attach the reset button uh, to the click event handler so that we can detect whenever the reset button is clicked i'm gonna call the reset function over here and now um, if i go here and i color anything and i reset there you see it's all resetting back again now after that all i gotta do is the last thing i need to do is to change that a uh, grid size dynamically so what i'm going to do is i'm going to access the size element i'm going to add event listener and on key up so basically whenever uh, anything in that uh, input changes whenever my key whenever i press backspace or i add one or two or any number so my key goes up right so that means there's a change happening and after this i'm going to add a function and all i'm going to do within this function is i'm going to make the size global variable which we declared and i'm going to set, set it to uh, size element dot value and then after that i'm just going to call the reset function now this size element dot value as you can see over here this size element is attached to this size over here so whenever we change the value actual value in that input in the browser this will change and this is being equated to the global variable that we have over here so after that we're calling reset and reset is doing nothing but resetting the whole container and then calling add grid and when that happens it takes the size variable already has the new size and when add grid is called it's going to change the size of the grid again based on this for loop because it's going to set the property of uh, size again as well in the css for the grid columns and rows so now um, if i save this and i go back to my browser and if i just add anything over here and then i reset you can see that it works and now if i just try to change the grid size you can see all right you can see the grid size changing when we make 30, when we make 30 it changes to 30 when we make 10 oops, 10 40 5 whatever all right so this works perfectly if i add any color um if i add any color right now you can see the color changing and then if i change the color from here um it's not changing it to the one that i want because i have to move it here and then i move it here around you can see the color change i can change it to any color i want and there you go you see it work and now if i want to reset the board everything will reset and the grid size can also change all right so that's that this is all for the video we built the project entirely and all the functionalities work fine so if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and until then peace